Hey, sweetie. What? How much money did you just spend? Don't worry about how much money <laughs> I just spent. I got you something too. Uh, So today I am back at Destination Toys located in Jacksonville, Illinois. This store is not too far away from home and this was just one of those weekends where I was itching to hit up a toy store. Wanted to do some hunting, wanted to see what I could find, had no idea what was in store for me today. So the last time I was here, uh, it was my first experience at the store, but also the employee at the time told me that the owner of the store was actually set up at a local-ish toy show, so a large portion of the stock wasn't in the store. So I was hoping that this time around, I'd see some different things, and I definitely did. Now, I still didn't get a chance to meet the owner of the shop, uh, but there were some new things to look at here in the store, which is always awesome, so let's see what we can find today. Now, right in the front, all laid across the counter, is a really cool selection of vehicles from G.I. Joe. And if you've been watching these toy hunts, you know that lately I've kind of been paying a little more attention to G.I. Joe. Even though it's a line that I'm not super nostalgic for, I definitely have a little bit of nostalgia for the property, and there are certain things that have really been appealing to me today. So I'm looking at all of these vehicles. I see a lot of baggied figures here as well, which are all incredibly cool. One of the things that I picked up and found is Serpentor's Air Chariot. This is another one of those things that I just keep running across in my toy hunts. There's a $20 price tag on this, which seems pretty good, but I'm doing that thing where I don't know if I want to just buy the Air Chariot and then hope I get the figure at some point or if it's better to get them together. I don't know, but I do know at some point I am definitely going to own this figure and this Air Chariot. I think it's just a matter of time. Speaking of G.I. Joe's, one of the things I spot hanging up on the wall are these carded figures from Lanard's The Cores. Now, the cores are figures that I had a lot of as a kid. I didn't have these Star Force ones specifically, although these are incredibly cool. Love those white designs, the spacey theme. But let me tell you, look at the original price tag on this three pack here. Three dollars. Three dollars. There's a reason I had so many figures from the Coors line as a kid, and it's because my dad would see these at the store and say, you get three figures for $3, as opposed to one G.I. Joe for like three or $4. And so that was something that he considered when buying these or convincing me which ones I should spend my money on. And to be honest, I have no regrets. I think the Coors is actually a pretty great line. There are some really cool designs for it. These Star Force figures are pretty darn sweet. There's even a single carded one there with an original price tag that says 99 cents. Man, it is hard to believe that we used to be able to spend $1 and get figures like this. I miss those days. <laughs> Something else that's spotting my eye in this section is this amazing bootleg Street Fighter figure two pack from Argentina featuring Bison and Sagat. Ah, oh, you guys know that I already have a love for these Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat G.I. Joes as it is. I also love international releases like this. This is just awesome. Something I've never seen before, so definitely cool to see. So I've walked into the Star Wars room here at Destination Toys and immediately my eyes go to this selection of loose Micro Machines play sets. Uh, these have been something that I've really been drawn to lately. I've picked some of them up at recent shows. So seeing a whole batch of loose ones down here is pretty cool. Though I do feel like since prices on the boxed ones that I've seen haven't been too bad, if there's any more of these that I want, I'm probably gonna stick with buying boxed ones because then I'll know that I get all of the pieces with them. 
Now, aside from those play sets, there are some figures that are catching my eye in here, specifically the Action Fleet series. Now, these figures are a little bit bigger than the micro figures that come with those play sets. So it's kind of like its own line there. It's different. These are the ones that had some bigger ships that the figures could sit in. But these little multi packs are really, really cool. And I got to be honest, they are really, really tempting. Seeing stuff here like the Skiff and the Dubak and especially the Jabba the Hut pack. Ooh, I don't know. Man, those are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, Leopard Man. So first I picked this up and I was like, why is it so dark green? But uh, the sticker says it's a custom paint deco. Let's see, the stickers are removed from it, but that looks pretty cool. Oh, it's still here. What is this? As I wander into one of the other rooms in the store, I immediately notice that that army gear set is still here. Calling all boys for army gear! Weapons check! Your machete has a hidden power! There's a troop of six and a lookout tower! That canteen's so much more I hear! There are planes and torpedoes in this army gear! Take a look at this watch I wear! Weapons and troops are gathered there! An army and an army, all right here! We're the volunteers for army gear! Join the army gear, the army in an army. Open to reveal two worlds of battle action from Galoob. If you watched my last video from here at Destination Toys, this is one of the sets that I saw that I almost bought and I didn't, and I kind of regretted it after I left because it was so cheap, and I don't run into these, like, ever. I've really been into these whole micro play sets lately, and I've been trying to pick up just, like, an example from all these different lines. I'm not trying to all-out collect every single micro play set there is, but getting certain samples from different lines is something that's appealing to me. So I think today I'm definitely going to be grabbing this Galoob Army Gear set. Checking out the wall of wrestlers, lots of good wrestling figures here, but one that I really think is cool is this... DX Wise Guys 4-pack. Uh, this is just fun. I love it when they make wrestling toys that aren't just purely the guys in their gear. I like when they do weird stuff like this. This is based on a photo shoot that Degeneration X did, I think for WWF Magazine. I'm pretty sure I had that issue back in the day. So the fact that they made action figures based off of this photo shoot, I think that is just so cool. <laughs> Oh, hey, the Eternia Towers. Now look, I run into these all the time at this point. Just the three Eternia Towers by themselves. Um, these things have gone way up in price. Obviously, this is the biggest playset to come out of the vintage Masters of the Universe toy line. Also came out at the very end, so not a lot of kids had this one. It was expensive, the line was winding down. So it's no shock that these keep getting more and more expensive, but luckily I already have the three towers at home. So finding these isn't something that makes me like, feel like I need to buy anything. So that's good. Imagine Eternia. Eternia. Imagine the gate of fangs. Eternia. Batteries not included. Imagine the soaring sky tracks. Figures sold separately. The cavern of justice. Eternia. Imagine the power lift to the control chamber. At last, of the masters of the universe, the world you've always imagined can be yours. Kenner Aliens. All right, so I love the Kenner Aliens line, and I have a bunch of Kenner Aliens and Predator figures already in my collection, but lately, I've been picking up carded examples of these, just here and there, when I find them, when the prices are good, if the cards are good. So these definitely have me interested, especially this light blue warrior alien, which is one that I don't have in my collection at all yet. Now this is an insane Kenner Batman variant. Oh my gosh, I love Kenner Batman figures, especially the weird ones. This one is called Lightwing Batman. He is from 1995 from the Batman Forever toy line. This thing is insane. You can tell it's got a light up feature. His wing pack has just got this gigantic battery pack on it. 
Man, that's so gaudy, I kind of am into this thing. Oh, and speaking of awesome Kenner Batman toys, there's the Custom Coop. Uh, this is one I remember my brother having as kids, and uh, I always loved taking this and playing with this one. This is the one that came with a Bruce Wayne figure, and you can transform him from Bruce to Batman in the car. This is just the car by itself, but it's in good shape and the price is right, so this is going in my maybe pile today. Oh man, nostalgia unlocked. On this wall of carded figures in the store, I spy this little figure, which is just simply called Ninja Warrior. Let me tell you about Ninja Warrior. When I was a kid, these were being sold at my local dollar store, and I had many of them. They came packaged with a variety of different weapons, with different colors. Some of the ninjas were all black. Some of the ninjas were molded in glow-in-the-dark plastic. I thought they were the coolest things to get from a dollar store. And they're one of those toys that I remembered having but could never remember what they were called as an adult collector. And it took me years to track these things down. I eventually found a loose example at the Kane County sh uh, Toy Show years ago. But this is my first time seeing one on card. Oh, this is so cool. And there were other really cool dollar store lines that they've got a great example of here at the store, which are just seriously bringing back all these amazing nostalgic feels. We got stuff like this guy called the Stellar Force. Weird name, awesome card art, really, really funky looking figure. And then there's also this figure from this incredibly cool line called The Wizard's Magic. I definitely remember having some of the figures from this set as well. I think these actually came out in the early 2000s. And even at that time, they were catching my eye as something pretty cool. I don't know. I just love seeing stuff like this. Part of being out toy hunting and shopping for this stuff is just seeing things you haven't seen since you were a kid. Things you forgot about. Things you didn't know about. Just really makes this all so exciting to me. Okay, wait, time out. As I'm walking around the store and beginning to wrap up, I think I know what I'm gonna buy, but I notice a tote sitting on the floor. And when I peek in this tote, I notice that it is filled with tracks and accessories for that Eternia playset that I noticed earlier in the day. Now I mentioned that I've already got the three Eternia towers at home, but mine is missing most of the accessories. I was lucky enough to buy the three towers many, many years ago. I've probably had it for 10, 11, 12 years at this point. So I got them very cheap from a local friend. I think I paid around $200 for them, which is a steal in today's terms for that particular playset. And I always thought I was perfectly happy just having the three towers without all of the accessories. Kind of until I worked on the book, The Toys of E-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And getting a chance to see that thing all complete when I photographed it made me long for that in my collection. So now I'm looking at these parts and I'm wondering, are these for sale? Are these separate? Are these being sold with the playset? I think I'm gonna have to ask about this. And when I asked, the employee said, we're not selling it whole because we had this complete for a long time and nobody was buying it. So we finally started parting it out. So they've already sold some pieces to other people that needed them, which is a bit of a shame when you think about like a, a complete Eternia being scrapped like that, but it does open an opportunity because now maybe I can get a good deal on some of the parts that I need for my Eternia. So we got the parts all laid out. We're looking through them. The employees got the store owner on the phone and we're doing the negotiation part. We're trying to figure out a good deal for all of these pieces and what I'm gonna bring home. This is a pretty good bag because this includes every single one of the hooks 
for all three towers that holds up the monorail tracks. It also includes the weapons rack and two of the little griffins, the two little griffins that sit in the front of Eternia Tower, and probably most importantly, all of the little metal chains for Serpent Tower, which crazy enough, are some of the most expensive pieces to track down for this playset. So we're negotiating, we're going back and forth, and they made me an offer. All of these parts, for four hundred dollars. Ha! That's a lot. But in the grand scheme of things, it's actually a pretty good deal. Hey, sweetie. Now, do you want this in the bag too, or do you want that separate? I'll carry that separate. That's what I ask when it's high yeah. dollar stuff. Like, oh, okay, I'll carry it. There you go. Hey, sweetie. What? How much money did you just spend? Don't worry about how much money <laughs> I just spent. <laughs> I got you a present. Aww. <laughs> that for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, wait. So I did it. <laughs> I did it. I I bought the Eternia pieces, um, which is really really crazy. So. Huh, holy cow. So because I made that decision, I ended up putting back almost everything else that I was gonna buy that day, because that is a massive purchase. I did end up picking up that army gear set, which is pretty sweet. It's a little grenade that opens up into a base. I love how the minifigures in here look like the little plastic green army men, but they're slightly articulated. Unfortunately, the base is slightly broken, but I might be able to repair it. Uh, it is still a really nice piece and I got it for very cheap considering what else I bought today. Which of course is that bag of pieces for my vintage Eternia. So I was missing most of the pieces, as I said, and after getting home and putting these on my Eternia, I've got to admit, it looks so cool now. I am actually very, very happy with how this looks. Now, all of my tracks do have some breaks in them because they're fragile, so I don't have the tracks up right now, but having all of those hooks is very nice. I love that I have all of those metal chains for Serpent Tower. It makes it look so much cooler. And finally, having both of the griffins down in the front is also very nice. Really just helps with the overall aesthetic of this particular playset. And again, $400 does seem like a lot of money for this bag. I kind of put it into perspective and looked. So if you look at some of the prices that these things are going for individually, uh, I actually did get a really good deal. On top of that, I'm investing in something that I really care about, a piece that's important to my collection, something that I really want. So it does feel good to do something like that. Plus, because I bought this giant bag of parts, I did end up with a few extra pieces, um, some of which could still bring in some cash. So somewhere down the road, I'm either going to try to sell these to somebody that needs them to recoup some of the cost, or I'm going to trade them for more parts that I need. So while I dropped a lot more money today than I was really expecting to when I got that urge to go out toy hunting, I feel good about this because I'm doing something that makes me happy and that is completing a big piece for my collection. It's pretty cool stuff. Hey guys, thank you so very much for joining me for another toy hunt episode. I've been having so much fun putting these together, this new format, and I'm getting a lot of great positive feedback from you guys. So thank you all so very much for continuing to watch. Uh, help me out by sharing this video if you get a chance. Let's spread the word to get the toy hunt episodes out there. Uh, also, I wanna give a very special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon. If any of you are watching this and are in a place to help support the channel, um, definitely check out my Patreon. I do offer episodes of the show early over there as an incentive, but regardless of how you choose to support me and this channel, I am incredibly appreciative. Thank you all so very much for watching and until next time.